I believe languages and learning languages can, can really make the world a better place. I mean, as a language learner, first of all, you are very humble. Learning all these different languages and culture, I do almost feel I'm at home. Welcome to your new episode of Wish I Knew That Before. I'm your host, Amit Pandey, and here we bring on guests from different walks of life to discuss ideas, answer questions that can directly help a young adult navigate the journey of life a bit better. Our guest for today's show is a polyglot. Polyglot is someone who can communicate in multiple languages. And last I checked, our guest can do the same in eight different languages and is always learning new ones. When asked, what's the craziest goal he achieved when it comes to languages? Learning Portuguese in a weekend and having a conversation later, he replied. Italian by birth, a world citizen by choice. His love affair with languages started when he first learned German from scratch after moving to Germany a few years back. He first-hand experienced the power of languages when it comes to integrating into a new culture, connecting with locals and seeing the world from a new perspective. A true believer of Nelson Mandela's quote, If you talk to a man in a language he understands that goes to his head, but if you talk to him in his language that goes to his heart. With a desire to connect with more hearts around the world, today he's building a lifestyle that can allow him to work from anywhere through his online language coaching program and being a freelance project manager. So please join me in welcoming the guy who will make you fall in love with learning languages through his wisdoms and stories around the world. The master storyteller, the polyglot, the citizen of the world, Simone Poles, everyone. Yeah! Hi, Amit. Bonjour, everyone. Buongiorno. Merhaba. <laughs> How are you? How are you? Thanks. Yeah, do, Thanks. do, do all the eight languages. <laughs> There, there were a couple more. that are not in, in, the, in the languages. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bon dia, buenos dias, yeah. buen dia, depending on the, on the, on the yeah. accent that we want to pick. You know, like, uh, I, I particularly noticed that I never ha- really had that much interest when it comes to learning languages or mm-hmm. um, just going deep into it. I am a more scientific guy, so I always want to know the reason why this is called something. And when I started to look into, when I was, like, preparing for my GRE uh, to go to US, I started to look into more words and the roots for it. And when I started to understand, okay, there there is a Latin root to this, this is what it means in Latin and in this word when you know the meaning uh, like where it came from it all makes sense so yeah i think that's that's what really makes languages interesting also yeah. i mean all these these connections all these the connection also to history right of right. how one population influenced another one and, and yeah. then it's all a mix let's say absolutely absolutely i i really want to go and talk um, simone about different languages like how what was your journey when it comes to languages the common myths around languages like Mm -hmm. a lot of people say oh adults can can't learn languages and you're a case that you can Um, I want to talk about the travel stories and so much more but firstly I would want to start which I really found very interesting in your journey is there were so many doors that opened in your life because of languages and one was i uh, through my research i found that okay uh, it it helped you quite a lot in your career but along with your career what were some other aspects that um, really opened up in your life when it comes to languages yeah well career uh, i mean languages have been having a huge impact on, on my career and uh well, you said yourself, you quoted Nelson Mandela, which is, I think, one of my most favorite quotes. Um, it's really about connecting with people, right? Because if you speak someone's language, you can connect to a person on an all different level. It's not the same thing, right? right. I have right. hundreds of stories. One time, for example, I was in, uh, I was in Armenia, right? Okay. Yeah, traveling around and I had booked a taxi because I wanted to see some 
monasteries uh, and a few uh, sites outside right. uh, out of right. town, just, just out of town. Taxi arrives and the uh, taxi driver says, hello, in yeah. English. It was probably the oh. only word in English the taxi driver knew. Yeah. And uh, I replied in my broken Russian because yeah. back then I had started learning Russian, I think, a couple of months before. Yeah. Yeah. And I replied, Privet. And uh, and you had to see his face, right? Like a sun started to shine or something. Wow. And he was super happy. And yeah. uh, and then he started, you know, speaking uh, Russian with me, sharing uh, uh, something more about the history of the places we were uh, actually seeing. Mm. And uh, at a certain uh, moment, he stopped. Yeah. At the gas station, and I'm like, okay, maybe he, you know, he needs gas or whatever. Yeah. Actually, he comes back with coffee and oh, uh, wow. ice cream, right? So, yeah. so this would have never happened, for example, if I, I mean, by speaking English. And you were sitting just, just there chilling and he went and, <laughs> oh, He okay. went there, came back with coffee and ice cream for me, you know, and yeah, it was just yeah. amazing. It was so nice. And then... I invited him over um, to, yeah. to, you know, to to grab a bite after the tour. Yeah. And that's yeah. how we we shared a very very nice day. And this is just one wow. of many many, many examples I, I can, of I, how I can imagine. Uh, language learning really enriches right. our lives. I think. Right, right. No, absolutely. I think. I think. Um, when when looking into your life the the life that you're building right now as well you're traveling across the world and uh joining uh, different groups and meeting new people learning their languages and just as i said in the introduction as well becoming a global citizen per se right mm -hmm. and i i really loved that researching you something that so that is also one of your motivation, right? Like to connect with people and um, understand different cultures and so many other things. In your career, um, one of the motivation or like you also share this in your um, videos as well that when it comes to learning a language, there has to be certain motivation as well. How did that motivation of going ahead and becoming a polyglot came to you was it just because of your career or was there other things as well involved in it and what was the role of your career in like pushing you to go ahead and do this yeah well i think so the first foreign language uh, i had started learning uh, apart from english that i learned at school uh was chinese mandarin okay. right yeah and in that case i didn't really have a very strong motivation that's probably also why i stopped after a while um, mm. I just started because in, in Milan, uh, I, I was born and raised close to Milan in Italy. There were mm. a lot of uh, uh, people from China, a lot of okay. Chinese speakers. And I was like, okay, I want to, you know, communicate with these people, right? Um, mm. But then I moved to Germany. And when I moved to Germany without speaking German, right. I was like, I'm not going to jungle two languages and, and learn Mandarin and at the same time start German from scratch. So that's how more or less I abandoned Mandarin and yeah. I really started focusing on German. Uh -huh. German, my motivation to learn, uh, to learn the language was obvious in my case. I was living in a country, yeah. but I really also took it as a challenge because many people told me, Simone, German is such a yeah. complicated language. You are never going to learn it. Yeah. That's what yeah. I put a lot of energy into learning German and yeah. by now is is one of the the languages uh, I I speak on a very high level. Like I'm working wow. in German as a project manager, right? So yeah, uh, it really depends. I always say yeah, be sure to have a strong motivation. My motivation mm. to learn mm. Mandarin was really not so strong because right. okay, there's a lot of people to speak a language. Okay, but if you don't if you don't have friends mm. from China. Mm. Or if mm. you don't want to, you know, travel to the country or maybe right. uh, get a job uh, where you need to use Mandarin, and yeah. the motivation is not so strong. Even if you are learning a language because of your job, yeah, that's not the intrinsic motivation. So right. I always right. say, right. try to work on that. 
Because can, can, can you talk a little bit about that? Like um, the difference between intrinsic and the extrinsic. Like um, what is the role of uh, these motivators? Yeah. So, well, in general, uh, maybe I just explain shortly. Extrinsic motivation is a motivation that comes from, I don't know, if I learn German, I'm going to get more money on my mm. job. I'm going to mm. get promoted, right? Mm. Mm. Intrinsic is I want to learn German because I really love the language, mm. right? Or because my girlfriend is from Germany. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. you see that it's a very different level of motivation, yeah. right? It plays On, a, a deeper role, yeah. It's a way deeper motivation and we can yeah. really connect yeah. to that on a different level. So the trick there is, it's, it's okay, of course, to if someone wants to learn German yeah. because of his or her job, right? Yeah, yeah. But sometimes it's not strong enough. So we uh, could we... find something that transforms uh, an mm. extrinsic motivation in an intrinsic motivation, yeah. right? Yeah. A very stupid or silly example. Maybe we fall in love with our German teacher, right? Yeah. And then ah. we have another reason <laughs> why we want to learn a language. Why not? Why not? Language okay. teachers are always uh, beautiful. I, I, I don't know. I've noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think I think you're absolutely right about this. Like right now, I am in France, um, as I shared with you before, and um, I am a very social person. I, I I really thrive on energy of other people and my social connections. And um, even before coming to France, I think one of the key things that was there in my mind is I want to learn French simply because. I want to belong. Mm-hmm. I I want to make friends. I want to be accepted. I just want to not feel alone, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think till now that I have this motivation, even though I have not put in great strides when it comes to learning the language i think and that is what something that we can go further and discuss about like what the common mistakes that people do when it comes to learning languages but in my case i think you're absolutely right like till today i have three more months remaining in france but i'm still hell-bent that no i think these three months as well i want to utilize even though i did not do great things in the past but still these three months i want to make sure that i learn even though i'm not going to be here but still like three these three months i want to utilize to learn this language to even make a little bit more friends around here because life can get really lonely um when you are in a different country and people don't speak the same language it's just difficult to make um friends that easily so yeah. I, th- uh, I think you're absolutely right about that. When it comes to learning German, right? I think that was, as you said, like your second foreign language, but you abandoned mm. Mandarin for a reason. When you were learning German, it was your first sort of a language that you were learning from scratch. And it was German, as a lot of people say, it is complicated. You took on the task to do it. What were the mistakes that you did that now when you look back, you can really point out like, oh, I did that mistake, that mistake, that mistake the, during learning German? Yeah, I think sometimes uh, I would, uh, you know, you want to learn a language, you have a brand new book, you're so excited about yeah, starting learning yeah. the language. And then, you know, the first day you put in 10 hours, okay, I'm going to smash it. And then yeah. the next day is a bit less because you realize it's not feasible. I mean, we all have a job, uh, maybe a bit of social life. Uh, uh, we want to go to the gym and stuff. Right? Yeah, yeah, and then it's less yeah. and less and less and less. So I did not have a routine, right? Uh... So I started like really motivated and then it got less, it got less. And I realized, okay, maybe uh, it's not really worth it to start with 200% and then slowly die out. Yeah, uh, but it's yeah, better if yeah. I just uh, start uh, slower, but I'm consistent over time. So consistency is consistency. one of the most important things when we talk yeah. about language learning, no, not just when we talk about language learning, but yeah, yeah. everything. You want to run a business, you want to build a company, be consistent Absolutely. about it. Right? You want to run a marathon, right? be consistent with your training. So right. uh, that's, I yeah. think, one one of them. Um yeah. 
not uh, repeating or rehearsing or, or coming back over mm. and over again on the same right. material over time. Right. right? That's also right. a big mistake that I, I used to do. And yeah. Uh, yeah. there's this guy called uh, Ebbinghaus, which is the mm. godfather of, uh, let's say, memory. Uh, memory, and, like, is he the guy who talks about memory palace or uh, mm, like memory, memory palace? He, he's talking no. about forgetting and how ah. forgetting works, right? DK. Right, 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 right. Ah, I all remember. All that kind remember. of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like uh, you have to, uh, like there is a curve, like when you learn something, it dies down and then you, when you recall it, then it like gets boosted, like, you know, things like that. Okay, okay, okay. Absolutely. I, 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 know. I remember. And that's okay. why yeah. with language learning, it's really important also, you know, you keep on learning, but then you come back and, yeah. and then uh, recall what you have been learning over time because uh, otherwise it's, I'm not going to say it's useless, but you tend to lose yeah. a lot of yeah. the information yeah. that you actually I want to I think that's learn. happening with me in my language journey. Like yeah. it's, I have this shiny object syndrome. It's like, you just want to keep learning or you just want to keep learning new things. I want to learn this. I want to learn that but I don't want to go back and practice. And in real life as well, I would learn a lot of things and maybe sometimes even understand what they are saying, but I couldn't say it back because I never really practiced going back and studying again the things. And after the conversation, I would go back and with a relaxed mind, I would think what exactly could I have replied and the answer comes to me. But it never in that moment because I yeah. never paid you no know, put in the efforts to go back and learn. So you're hitting a quite quite an important point over here is like the importance of um, like going back and learning things uh, again and again. Uh, not again and again, but I think we can go into the specifics of that. But what 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 other things did you notice that you made a mistake in in your language journey when it comes to German? Yeah. I think at the, um, I honestly got over this pretty fast, but at the beginning I was a mm. bit, you know, um, afraid of making mistakes, of course, like everyone, right? Uh, um, yeah. Because, yeah. because we all sound a bit silly when we, you know, try to speak a foreign language yeah. that we don't master. Yeah. And uh, and we don't want to sound silly in general yeah. in life, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, but once you get in the mentality and and the mindset of, uh, you know, I'm learning, I'm a language learner, and this is a process, yeah. and this is taking ages because even my native language, right, mm. Italian, mm. if I talk to someone about, I don't know, biology, which is not yeah. my domain. I might not know a bunch of words uh, related to biology, right? So I'm yeah, never going to yeah. be 100% fluent in a language in every single domain, right? Hmm. So, hmm. and once we get used to that, we know that it's, it's okay. Making yeah. mistakes is part of the journey. And yeah. actually, the more mistakes we make, the more opportunities we have to correct them and to keep on improving so we should yeah. just go out there and make a bunch of mistakes make a right? bunch of mistakes <laughs> no, but I, think, I think you're absolutely right like um, when it comes to mistakes as well I think it's it's so difficult at least for me as well I have noticed that I don't want to sound silly but on the times when I've actually sounded silly or I've actually made a mistake and ask the speaker, like someone that I'm having a conversation, what do we call this? Like specific things that I've asked them. I remember those things much more because there is also emotions attached to it. Like, you know, I'm doing this. So like my body also remembers that sensation when it comes to with that word as compared to just passive learning where I'm just listening to something someone is saying and I'm not actively participating in it, right? Yeah. So I think I think you're absolutely uh, right about that. And I think while you shared these things, you also shared some things that a lot of the beginners would also do, which is they would start 
they would avoid to make mistakes you know so don't avoid to make mistakes go out there and um uh do it um go back and do spaced repetitions i think that's the word right like do, do spaced, spaced rep- repetition s- space repetition um what stories comes to your mind when it comes to embarrassing yourself uh in a in a foreign language uh oh wow well i have one yeah. um i think a couple of months after i moved to germany uh-huh. for the very very first time right i ordered food in german right okay yeah yeah i was so happy because i exactly got the food i ordered cool. mission accomplished yeah. <laughs> cool. but at a certain point the waitress comes back yeah. and uh in german she's like atales geschmeckt now i did not absolutely did not understand what that meant yeah, yeah. right but i'm used that in italy they ask you if you want a dessert right yeah so yeah. i just assumed okay she's she's probably going to ask if i want a dessert right so i smiled back yeah. and i said nine danke no oh, thank you she okay. went pale absolutely because it turns out that atales geschmeckt in german means was it all good was the food good oh. right. and i very <laughs> kindly with a smile on my face it's like no thank you <laughs> right <laughs> so that i think was the most embarrassing moment because i was really afraid okay what type what, what's going to happen here what yeah, did i say yeah, that wrong yeah. cannot be that and, wrong and, right and in the moment you didn't know right like you said no her, her face went pale and you did not understand what's going on right absolutely i was like yeah, what's up yeah. Yeah, right yeah, yeah. but yeah. then but then luckily okay we switched to english and uh, <laughs> i mean uh, we could clarify right but i will forever and ever remember atales geschmeckt ah but, exactly um, exactly yeah yeah absolutely no so i think i think um, and 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 especially when you are in a foreign country i think um, um making such mistakes are bound to happen but honestly bro like uh, as you said it's 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 a little tough to go out there and make a fool of yourself knowing very well that you're going to make a fool of yourself um and a lot of times in your mind i think i think even i have noticed in my uh, four months that i have stayed here in france is like you think people are going to be rude to you you think they are not going to mm-hmm. help you out in your mind you think you're wasting their time but a lot of times i have been proved wrong that when i go even when i try to speak like in my broken french and um i make mistakes a lot of times they help me out they actually help me out they uh, like i did uh, recently uh, my haircut in completely in french i wrote scripts mm-hmm. like what could possibly they say when i am booking or what do a reservation how to make a reservation in french and the first call that i did the guy used words which i like it was in there in my script how do i reply to that right and um it 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 was a big failure i sort of understood okay he doesn't have place for me today and i kept the call the second call that i made was a wonderful lady um because i started in french and i i was like okay this is what i want i want a reservation uh for ajodhvi um and she because there's there's no reason for her to doubt me to to me that i don't speak french because i'm speaking from a script right mm-hmm. and then she went on to talk fast in french and i was like como <laughs> she and she replies <laughs> como <laughs> like what what do you not understand <laughs> and then i uh, i had to tell her that je fa force of i speak a very little french uh, please bear with me and then she was i think from her perspective she spoke very simple french to me but a lot of times i couldn't understand and i said no je ne comprends pas i don't understand and she 
I think she, maybe she went to the level of nursery kids to uh-huh. just She's give simplified. me numbers or very simplified, right? Nice. But only when I put myself in that situation that hey, you have to do this. There is no backing out. When I actually made the call, and this happened four months into living in France. Like mm-hmm. after four months, I sort of mustered the courage to actually do a call and not think like, "Oh, I'm wasting their time. Uh, they, how, what would they think of me?" So there is a lot of internal struggle also that you need to um, work at, and I'm sure that when it comes to learning language, it's a process. So let's mm-hmm. actually talk about that, right? As a beginner, when I am learning, let's say I decide like I have a big intrinsic motivation that's the first step established i have a big intrinsic mm-hmm. motivation i want to learn a a particular language a lot of times you would see people in this day of so digital media uh, digital age we might go to duolingo we might go mm-hmm. to uh, rosetta stone what do you think and i'll I, we'll go into the uh, st- specific strategies but what do you think when it comes to these l- language learning apps what is missing in their features because i have seen a lot of people get on to it and they learn few words and they think that okay they are learning but a lot of times it fizzles out what do you think is missing in that language learning journey when it comes to learning from apps just them and something that you would do otherwise with your knowledge right now yeah so i believe first of all i give a lot of credits to to Duolingo, because uh, uh, many people get into language learning thanks to Duolingo because it's free, right? right. right. And right. and then and then they move up, then they will move on. They change strategies. They do a lot of stuff. They maybe end up learning a lot yeah. of languages, but yeah. the very first step is maybe Duolingo, right? Right. So right. They're doing a very good job in okay. in that terms. Yeah. Um, I believe it, it's not enough, though, right? Because on one end, it is a bit too easy, mm. right? I mean, you are mm. playing and, uh, you know, you are often playing in this sort of my brain is disconnected kind of mode. Maybe you're on the bus, right? You are commuting mm. and you're, mm. you're playing a bit on, on Duolingo with, with your phone. Mm. Mm. We, we are never... 100% concentrated on something when we are on the phone, right? There's maybe who, who. a lady walking next to us or we're yeah. looking yeah, yeah. out at the window or uh, we are playing with the app and then, I don't know, someone sends us a WhatsApp message, we have a notification, right? Yeah. There's a lot of micro distraction going on all the time also, who, who, you know? Um, while we should go for what's difficult, right? I always who. say... Guys, if we feel stuck with our language learning, do what's difficult, what doesn't come easy to you. If something mm. is too easy, it's probably not going to stick. Mm. You know? mm. So mm. Maybe we, we get this feeling of accomplishment because, you know, we complete a lesson. Exactly, and, exactly. And we yeah. get ping, yeah. pong, pam, you know, all the dopamine yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Good, but, you know... It takes really a lot of time and way more repetitions uh, to make a new word stick, for example, right? And some other time, for example, I, while traveling around uh, Turkey, yeah. I wanted to, you know, learn a bit of the basics of the language. And uh, I had no book with me. I had nothing. Hmm. I had Duolingo because I have my phone with me yeah. all the time, right? Yeah. So... I actually started playing around with Duolingo um, yeah. to learn a few Turkish words. But what I did was I picked the lessons that I knew were important and useful for me in that very specific context. I didn't yeah. I didn't want to learn Turkish in general. I in wanted general, to learn the yeah. basics to communicate. So I did all the lessons about, you know, food, okay? Yeah, I didn't learn yeah. how to say elephant or giraffe in uh, yeah. in 
uh, in Turkish. There are no giraffes. Like in how India. how it would happen in lot of language learning class. Like okay, today we are gonna learn just numbers zero to thirty nine. Now we are just gonna learn colors. Like it was more contextual learning that you were doing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Right. But mm. you cannot do it mm. with Duolingo usually, or or with all these apps, because to unlock the next lesson. You you uh, well you cannot unlock uh, the next lesson unless you complete the one before, right? But right, what Duolingo right. allows you to do is to go through and do a test to assess your level. And okay. uh, I cheated at the test yeah. using Google okay. just to unlock all the lessons. And uh, then I completed only the contextual ones that I ones. needed to are relevant to me. Yeah. This is how yeah. I cheat using Duolingo. It's amazing because it works really well. If you want right. to, uh, you know, Love learn that. a yeah. few new words, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I love that. I love that. I think I think you hit a very important point over there, which is contextual learning. I think here in France as well, when I um I had a French teacher, and we were sitting in the lessons, and we would go and 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 my primary goal is to become conversationally fluent, um not like oh I want to um, um go and write books or like do a lot of things, even though those things play a huge role, like reading and writing as well. well but my primary or main thing is i want to connect with people and sometimes when you when it comes to speaking even when you're speaking with broken terms as well people understand you you know you it doesn't have to be exactly in the grammatical sense and all of that in my um, experience as well i noticed that i bumped around quite a lot because i i noticed i am losing interest when it comes to learning french and i noticed it was specifically because i wasn't doing a lot of speaking or i wasn't learning it contextually like i want to go go to my office and i want to ask my my colleagues how did their weekend go you know mm-hmm. como como se pasó tu weekend like how did how did your weekend go and that was much more important to me to have basic conversations rather than learn everything when it comes to uh, french and it was very overwhelming as well and i was like losing uh, interest from it but when i learned a lot about like assim- assimil i think you talk a lot about assimilation mm-hmm. like learning through assimilating things and um, naturally you pick up a lot of things from it so when i started to do contextual learning where I, i i just need to learn that i want to order food in french that really helped me to at least go and feel that okay i managed that there, there was this co- confidence building as well a lot of times when it comes to language learning i think the way things are taught they sort of reduce your confidence in the sense that they make you feel that oh you don't know enough but there are so many things that can you can already know because as an adult i have so many things to relate to you know i can think about okay this this relates to that this means that in that language and i think doing contextual learning really helped me to get confidence okay i went and i ordered my food in french i felt confident you know so what does what is can you can you talk more about this contextual learning and let's say someone comes to you as a beginner right mm-hmm. we establish okay motivation is important what how do you lead people when it la- comes to like taking them through this journey of becoming let's say conversationally fluent mm-hmm. well let's say that it depends on always on what do i i tend to define fluency we can define fluency in mm. very mm. different mm. ways right Right. What does it mean to be fluent in a language, uh, right? Uh, to be fluent uh, in a language, well, that means to be able to communicate effectively, right? right? We are fluent in our domain if we can communicate effectively. Uh, if I am uh, let's say a traveler uh, and I want to be able to check in at the hotel ask mm. for uh, how much uh, potatoes are at the market <laughs> or um, order food yeah. at the restaurant right if i can do it and i can yeah. do it successfully i'm fluent in my domain right mm. Mm. i want to work as a sales manager mm. for some international company dealing with south american customers 
I'm going to be fluent in Spanish. Well, Re. if I can negotiate uh, uh, contracts with them, if I can make them buy my products, right? So yeah, yeah. that's a good way to start. So we have to always ask ourselves, okay, what kind of fluency do I want to achieve, mm. right? For mm. me, with mm. Georgian and with Turkish, I wanted to reach this uh, traveling uh, uh, sort of uh, fluency, right? Mm. Yeah. But if I learn a new language, every time I learn a new language, I want to be able to work as a project manager in that language, right? So mm. I need mm. to mm. bring it to a very high level because that's my goal right. usually. Right? Right. Right. And, and based on that, then maybe you learn certain things and you 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 leave out some other things in in mm. in my case in the project manager case well mm. i tend to learn in a very holistic way because mm. uh, i always say the most difficult part of you know and and it could be the same for a for a sales manager or for for whoever working in a company it's okay. not to talk about your job with colleagues or with yeah. your customer it's when you okay. go out for dinner with your colleagues or yeah. with your customer, right? Because yeah. if your customer is into hunting, and it happened to me once, there was yeah. this German customer and they were into hunting and they were, they started chatting. We went for a beer, you know, yeah. after a yeah. long day of work and they started chatting about hunting and stuff. I, I had no idea what they were talking yeah. about. I was so lost. Yeah. Be yeah. Because of course, I mean, I'm not into hunting, so I did, didn't know yeah. all the vocab related to hunting. Vocabs right? that are hunting, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the tricky part, and, and that's why, I mean, if my goal is to, you know, work with the language uh, as a project yeah. manager, I tend to really learn yeah. it holistically, and to, to. So 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 as you said, like holistically, right? So can you can you define what this holistically means um, when it comes to learning? Because a lot of people would be like, okay, fine, I'll I'll go get a teacher or I'll progress through Duolingo simply. Like, but when you say holistically, and in your methods on in your experiments, how do you define that? Yeah, well, holistic for me it means to work on all the four different I call them arts. Many people mm. call them pillars of okay. uh, language learning, right? Okay. Um, so reading, listening, speaking, and writing, right? Okay. These are the four skills. Two of them are input that we create actively. Reading and um, yeah. writing and, and speaking mm. because okay. we are actively producing language. Producing, right, right. And uh, listening and reading are are yes. a bit more Input. passive, but I don't like to mm. use the active and passive uh, mm. definition because mm -hmm. if we read uh, and we do a bunch of stuff uh, while reading, it's not really passive. Okay, but yeah. that's yeah. another story. Right. Um, so yeah, holistically to me, it means to work on the four arts mm. at the same time because they reinforce each other. Hmm. Right. And how can someone do that effectively? Because I can go ahead and like start reading a bunch of stuff, but I don't understand it. I think somewhere you point out is comprehensible input. And I think, can you talk a little bit about that? Like when someone is starting in their journey, um, what, is, what does this mean? Like comprehensible input. And as you are talking about like reading, listening, can you define that? Yeah. We, let's say that we define an, an input, whatever input can be a video, a book, uh, mm. a podcast, whatever, yeah. as comprehensible if we understand that input, but the input contains some grammatical structures mm. that are mm. a bit more complicated than our current level in the language, right? Mm. So we mm. don't understand... 100% of it, mm, mm. but maybe we understand 80% mm. and we can sort of understand the missing 20% either from the context mm, mm. or thanks to repetition. Okay. 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 So right. for example, right. let me let me try to find a, an example. I love examples because they make things yeah. easy. 
Um, Hopefully. Well, in English, for example, let's say that maybe you don't know that you say, um, I love uh, eating burritos. You, you, you don't know that you have to use the progressive uh, form of the verb and say eating. Yeah. Maybe you don't know it, but you understand, right? If you read, if you know the word I love and mm. you know eat mm. and you know burrito and you, you read I love eating burritos, maybe in your mind it was something okay, yeah. but you read yeah. eating. Okay, that's comprehensible if, if no one ever told you that in yeah. that specific uh, case you should use this form, right? So that's yeah. a very yeah. simple example. But that's yeah. the, the idea behind comprehensible inputs to, to, yeah. to understand so, from so the even, So even before I reach that level of comp comprehensible inputs, I would have to obviously like sit down and uh, go through the the alphabets obviously like i go through the alphabets i learn how to how to say them pronounce them uh, there are there are things like okay few people share that go ahead and learn the uh, frequent words like mm -hmm. verbs or words when it comes to a particular language and you would learn quite you would understand quite a lot of things so what are the caveats around that like when you are starting okay to even reach a place where i can understand 80% of uh my level let's say for me I, i was starting in french sometimes i didn't know what exactly is my level so mm -hmm. i would go and listen to radio and try to catch words from there but sometimes i think i would go back and listen to poetries from kids like the poetries mm -hmm. that kids listen and maybe understand that so like when it comes to comprehensible input there are levels to that as well how can someone analyze their own level and what are some things that they can use um resources that they can go to when it comes to like understanding what all things to use yeah 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 well there's a lot of uh, books and they really start from scratch with simple dialogues one of them is asimil as you mentioned Ah, There's right. a series mm. of books from uh, Rutledge, for example, called Colloquial, uh, mm. I don't know, Colloquial Albanian, Colloquial French, mm. whatever. Mm. They also start mm. from scratch. Mm. Uh, mm. Um, there, what can people? Well, moving moving on a little bit. There's uh, what they call the graded uh, books, and mm. they are simplified books based on your level. So like A1. A2, okay. B1, B2, right. you're familiar with this uh, uh, right. international framework. Right, 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 right. Got it. So people can go and utilize uh, those things. But I think, I think you, uh, as you said, I think it's quite important to, because a lot of times I, I notice, even when I'm sitting with my colleagues, right, uh, I am getting, uh, people talk about the power of immersion. But power of immersion sometimes mm -hmm. can, like okay it, it helps your brain to get tuned to that language but a lot of times that language can become white noise if you're not really understanding what is happening you know the, as you said so i think comprehensible input is quite important and sometimes i notice that if i immerse myself just for the sake of immersion listening to things in just french uh, without actively even like even noticing words i think you shared in one of your one of your uh, podcasts that play a game play a game with the language you know like you're listening to the podcast uh, or whatever radio try to just find the words maybe you're not understanding what they are talking and it's fine you know don't yeah. even try to put so much effort find play a game find those words and if you understand those words and you pick that in their natural tonality or the speed and the rhythm that they are talking about that's a great win so i think when it comes to languages as well you also have to look at it from this perspective of how can i create small wins for me and someday you're going to reach there and it's a it's a it's it's going to be a process um 
but you have to you have to start you cannot be like oh because that that's what happened to me you know i did not m- know much about french and i was like mm-hmm. oh i'm going to become conversationally fluent in french in 6 months or whatever you know and then there is this effect called duncan kruger effect where you don't know much and your confidence is high and when you start to know that what is it going to take or how much is there to learn your confidence starts to go down and what you brought about is the, and and that's what happens in the uh, dunking kruger effect is like if yeah. you keep on learning if you keep on learning you would go to the valley but you will still sustain and the graph would go up it won't go up exponentially but it will go up slowly but consistency consistently if you keep doing it then only when you are overwhelmed when you feel that okay there are so many things to do and that this would never happen and i think a lot of people leave learning the language in that struggle phase um what what, what advice would you give or like in your journey what would you, what did you do differently that made you actually keep learning these eight languages or even more um now that could be um that you surpass that struggle phase you know you were yeah. able to go beyond that struggle phase interest so interest is really key to find to keep yeah. on finding through your language learning journey right. something interesting right at the beginning i play this little game usually as you mentioned yeah uh you know trying to recognize the words because it's funny right yeah. it's very yeah. helpful and it's yeah. funny yeah. and and then when i when i move on then i want to learn something mm. i want to use the language to learn something interesting for me right maybe that's a, i don't know a ted talk that i have to yeah. watch four times before i really understand what they're talking about yeah. uh but about a very interesting topic maybe okay um or communicating with people um mm. maybe i want to go to the market i mean if i am in the country for example mm. Uh, mm. i i want to communicate with people or i want to read something on the newspaper but yeah. always try to work with interesting material right mm. i always say guys if you're reading a book and there's one chapter that you don't like that doesn't sound interesting to you skip it Yeah. If you are uh, taking some online class uh, and there's a specific lesson that doesn't float your boat, just yeah. go for the next one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Try to find something interesting all the time. Yeah, yeah. So so I think I think we spoke quite a lot about different things over here in terms of strategies or the common mistakes that people usually do. if we have to like really put it into materialize like like really put it into practice life is life is busy you know we all are busy we have so many things to do um how would you guide someone if you want if you have to guide like three four steps in from your experience for someone to like really make their um language learning journey efficient and they are starting they are starting they don't know much about they are just doing the basic things how would you tell them or what would you tell them to make it more efficient when it comes to their uh, everyday language learning yeah well let's say if if you are starting from from scratch um if it's a language with a different uh, script uh, spend a few days uh, trying to decipher the script i always say okay. and you can easily do it by looking at international words uh mm. on the internet mm. in the script that you want to learn the word tokyo is going to be tokyo even written in with the georgian alphabet and you you can learn t o k and so on it's a little trick but right. okay assuming that uh, you you did this for like a couple of days or you're learning a language yeah. with the same script um yeah. try to find comprehensible material in your target language mm, mm. and try to practice every single day okay mm. and how much time well it depends on on your uh mm. on your goals and um, right. how busy you are and so on can right? i learn try just 15 minutes and become fluent <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> 
yeah exactly yeah. try to study like in 20 minutes uh, every day yeah. um yeah. in in my language learning routine usually i am studying between half an hour and one hour every mm. day uh, mm. i had peaks of productivity let's say yeah. where i'd study like one and a half hour uh every day for like uh, three four months yeah. uh, that was happening with uh, russian and i really yeah. saw a huge progress after you know yeah. i think one and a half hour every day um wow And you would do a bunch of things, right? Like the pillars that you spoke about. You would someday sit down and read and try to decipher. Some days you would listen, but as you said, like you would make it more active and try to write down things. Like how would you make it more active? Well, you can, for example, uh, watch a YouTube video and take notes. Mm. That's mm. way more active than just watching the video. Make it more active. Or, yeah. Yeah. It, depending on on your level of understanding you could mm. just jot down words that you don't know mm. or that are new to mm. you if you already mm, have mm, a good mm. level of understanding you can uh, uh write a piece of text about mm. this specific youtube video that you watched right and right. then maybe right. tell tell your friends for example yeah if you have friends in the target language well that's also how you memorize things in general not how right. you learn right um languages right so Absolutely. you you can tweak every single piece of content yeah. in, in a way that uh, it so, becomes so, way more effective so so i think i think i think you nailed it quite well like find things that are interesting to you because that would help you to be more engaged in that learning process um like do it consistently uh have a goal even 15 minutes have a goal sit down do it um sometimes when we actually think that oh, i'm going to do it for 15 minutes we tend to do it maybe half an hour but even if on the days when you Absolutely. do 15 minutes it's okay just sit down and do it i think consistency pays off and the more i'm talking to you i'm realizing my mistakes also that i am doing in 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 or i have done in these many months that why i am not at a place where i would have really wanted to be uh but what i can do also i'm getting so many ideas right now um when i'm talking to you right so make it interesting do consistent things find comprehensible inputs as well um and and make it a game like uh, as you said i think i think there is no one size fits all rule when it comes to language learning um you play with it you find your uh ways of learning that works for you but i think doing it consistent consistently is going to be one of the crucial elements of um of this journey uh anything else when it comes to learning languages that um uh, you would like to share that maybe i did not touch upon i think something that is very important uh, guys mm. we are all busy we all yeah. i mean life sometimes is unpredictable so yeah. also be compassionate about yourself if you if you skip a day or two you know no one is going to die It, it's okay so <laughs> and and don't be hard on yourself because i am i am i have this problem as well yeah. you know like uh, it yeah. took me i'm i'm still on the process of learning this <laughs> right sometimes i'm like yeah. oh simon you missed a day of learning ah <sighs> you don't deserve to live right um, <laughs> so be compassionate guys let's uh, don't 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 kill yourself <laughs> absolutely we 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 compassionate i love that i love that something that i personally was my favorite time when i was researching you is how beautifully you talk about uh, the power of languages when it comes to connecting with people and going across the world and traveling and how fun do you have um, you know doing that so what so what what stories comes to your mind when it comes to um, let's say breaking those stereotypes like you you started to learn a language and not, learning a language is not just about learning the language you also learn a lot about their culture the way they think you know so what what stereotypes did you break 
um when it comes to let's say one particular language that the world the world holds that stereotype like for me it was like oh french people are all rude and they are snobs and blah 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 and when i came here and i started to make friends and uh, engage with them in a particular and try to understand their culture where they come from um i broke those stereotypes uh, when it comes to that so what what stories comes to your mind when it comes to these many languages that you have learned any one that you want to talk about i i think if we talk about stereotypes the, the first thing that yeah. comes to my mind is german because as yeah. an italian speaker german really sound like this is harsh language very yeah. hard mm. and uh, mm. and actually i mean by now i really i like the sound of the german uh, language uh, and and how yeah. it, it doesn't sound that hard to me anymore <laughs> right um yeah. I, I, maybe because we are all used to you know movies from second yeah. world war where people are just screaming something in german yeah. very bad and yeah. and then we we get to to, to associate two things right yeah. Uh, yeah. but actually and especially I lived in Austria also for a, quite a while. Yeah. Um the way they talk in in Austria is very uh melodic. It's a, like a, ah, uh, I okay. really like it. So Yeah. So uh, that's that's what this a... was completely completely different. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was a bit of the same with uh Turkish because also ah. I mean there's a lot of um, people from Turkey living in German speaking countries. Uh-huh. I lived in Germany. I lived in Austria, right. and it always sounded don't understand. And then uh, I started. I don't speak Turkish, as I said before. I just have this very basic level of you know understanding. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but while traveling around the Balkans, every time uh, I'd be in a Turkish restaurant or in a cafe or here someone speaking Turkish that was so nice yeah. and lovely yeah. and, and yeah. such a nice sound. And I would say a few words that I know in Turkish and people are like every time super welcoming. This happened last uh, last night, actually, at the restaurant. Yeah. There was a couple that I just, um, uh, I just said hello because yeah. I just sat literally next to them. Yeah. Right. And, and then they, they shut yeah. me up and they were like, do you really speak Turkish? And I was like, wow. Mm-hmm. But yeah. my yeah. I, just a few words right uh, so yeah that that's, that's so cool a, a right? like i mean uh, how people become so happy when you actually speak their language and as as the nelson mandela quote we can go back to that like you speak to their heart you know uh, when yeah, you actually yeah, yeah, yeah. speak their language so that's that's a beautiful beautiful quote um one thing i think um that came up for me during our conversations as well is like you care about the world as 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 we said like you are a, mm-hmm. a w- citizen of the world what what role does languages play when it comes to creating a better world in your opinion i believe uh, i believe languages and learning languages can can really make the world a better place because we mm. I mean, as a language learner, first of all, you're very humble mm. because you are constantly learning. You're always a student. Uh. You know it's a process. You're never going to stop learning, right? So if yeah. you see someone struggling maybe with the language, but not just with the language in any domain of our life, yeah. then you have sort of developed through all these hours spent learning languages, this mindset of of acceptance uh, kind yeah. of uh, you know you know this person is probably just yeah. learning something like yeah. you are learning languages yeah. and, and it's okay it will yeah. take a while maybe tomorrow it will do uh, better um and also if you learn a different language you cannot learn a language without actually also learning something about the culture that might be uh. a very different culture from from your own one Right, and, right. and by you know learning all these different languages and culture i i do almost feel like i'm at home if i'm in a place where i know some of the language at least right yeah, and, yeah. and then you realize that really the world is just uh, you know <laughs> big family yeah. uh, beautiful so i think that's 
that's what we can learn uh, that's that's very really beautifully said like you can have more homes across the world and i think um, a lot in 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 this day and age of where we are hyper connected through social media at least there is a feeling that okay we are just a text away but still i think there is this global pandemic of ep- uh, loneliness or epidemic i don't know what what's the right word over there but of loneliness like <sighs> what if you learn languages and you go out and you are in a different country you can go out make new friends learn um learn to empathize better with with people from all across the world and as you said like once you start to know i think i think in life as well when we know someone's story we start to understand and see where they are coming from and i think as you mm-hmm. said like a language learner is always humble so because we understand our own struggles in this journey a lot of times we can understand other people's struggle and other people's journey as well or at least can sympathize with them you know so i love that i love that languages play a big role in uh making the world a better place and we can we can uh, just break so many stereotypes when it comes to it before i ask my last question um um uh, simone where can people find you or where can they connect with you or like when it comes to your language co online coaching program as well or what's the best place they, they, if someone has some questions they can reach out to you yeah well they can find me on my website uh, simonepols.com they can find mm-hmm. me on instagram as uh, okay. simonepols right. facebook simonepols youtube that. Simone Pauls Simone Pauls ah. uh, and also <laughs> yeah everywhere Simone Pauls and yeah. also on uh, executive uh, language coaching uh, which is also yeah. another brand new page that I I have uh yeah. more for the coaching but basically Simone Pauls whatever <laughs> Simone Pauls yeah. everywhere anywhere I love that I love that My last question to you Simone is um if I give you a megaphone to shout a message a lesson that you know now but you wish that you would have known that before what would it be that's a very good question i think uh, give yourself time like be patient you know um i have the feeling i i still should uh, shout it out to my, myself even nowadays not just something that i knew before but something that is really always good to you know to keep in mind uh, and to remember right because uh, i don't know sometimes you are like uh, Oh, the world is going so fast. Everything is going so fast, and I want to do these and these and these and that. Yeah. And you have the feeling that that you're 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 behind somehow, and you keep on running and running and running. Yeah. But that's not true. So take your time. Be patient. Uh, do what you love. and 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 enjoy the journey enjoy the process yeah. uh, while while yeah. doing it i mean not just about languages but about life in general i think yeah. wow wow listening of polyglot say take your time you're not behind and you want to shout out that message to yourself wow language does make you humble huh? <laughs> <laughs> guys this has been such an enriching experience to dig into the world of um, simone and get this perspective on just learn 
through his love for languages through his his learnings that he went through his mistakes that he did um and how he got through it and today here he is he speaks so many languages he empathizes with so many different cultures and he's here to shower you with some amazing tips and tricks when it comes to uh your own language learning journey and your own journey of becoming a global citizen one day and connecting with much more or many more cultures you know um in your language journey as we spoke about do things consistently go out there make mistakes people will help you out uh find things that are interesting to you um and just have those comprehensible input going on and i think you will be good we all will be good when it comes to learning languages make it a game because it is a game that you would love to play if you play it consistently and with interest thank you simone for doing this um this has been a beautiful beautiful conversation and it's been an honor to to dig into your world and learn about you thank you amit thank you everyone thanks for listening guys and uh, happy language learning to everyone happy language learning you're listening to wish i knew that before this is amit pandey see you next time